This is a short lesson to explain how birds fly. Now, of course, we know how a bird's wing generates lift. It's the same as an airplane. The wing moves through the air. The air is deflected downwards at the trailing edge. And the wing feels an upwards force. That's lift. Now, in moving the wing through the air, the flyer, the bird, needs to overcome drag. It's the cost of generating lift. To do it, the bird flaps its wings to generate thrust. To understand thrust on a flapping wing, we're going to use as a stepping stone the airplane propeller. Now consider an airplane propeller rotating, as shown in the animation. Imagine we're going to look at a cross section of one of the blades. We're going to look at it from the side as an airfoil. As such, it is moving, in this case, downwards. So here we have the blade. We're looking at a cross section, and it's moving downwards. So with respect to the blade, we have a velocity component that is pointing upwards. The plane is also moving from right to left. So we have another component of velocity, which is horizontal, in opposite direction, left to right, because we're looking at the velocity with respect to the blade. So the vector sum of these two components of velocity, I can draw like this green arrow. Again, with one component being due to the velocity of the blade downwards, and another one due to the velocity of flight. And this one is the result of the green arrow represents the relative wind with respect to the blade. So this relative wing, wind forms an angle with respect to the cord of the blade and this angle is the angle of attack. Now we know that there's going to be a force of lift that is perpendicular to the relative wind. So the force of lift is going to be perpendicular to the relative wing. And the force of drag is going to be parallel to that relative wind. So now let's look at this sketch more organized here. We have blade motion going down and the airflow due to the blade motion going up. We have the plane going from right to left, and so the airflow due to the incoming air is from left to right. The vector sum of these two is the relative wind. The angle of attack is formed between the relative wind and the chord of the profile, and we have a force of lift and a force of drag. Lift perpendicular to the airflow, drag parallel to the airflow. Now we take these two forces and we calculate the resultant, the vector sum of lift and drag. This is the resultant aerodynamic force on this profile, on this section of the blade. We can decompose this resultant again in two forces one horizontal and one vertical. The horizontal component is thrust. This vertical component is here pointing upwards. The component of the resultant perpendicular to thrust looks like a kind of lift. However, in the rotat rotating propeller, there will be a blade, if it's a two-blade propeller, imagine, one blade is moving upward while the other one is moving downward. So this force, force component cancels out in terms of lift. What it does is actually oppose the rotation of the propeller so that the engine must give the necessary torque to keep the blades rotating. 
So that's how we generate thrust in our propeller. In addition to that, notice that propellers are twisted along the blade and near the hub the rotational speed is lower near the tips the tangential speed is maximum so to maintain an ideal angle of attack along the blade length we need the propeller to be twisted so again the tangential velocity on each section of the blade is different and a different angle of attack is needed to obtain the best performance. So aircraft manage this issue by having propeller twist. However, birds twist their wings in flight to produce the same result. In, in birds, in bats and insects, the flapping wings provide the dual function that in airplanes is provided by the wings and the propeller.